Good morning, everyone. On today's show, we are packed with discussion. First of all, we're going to talk about some updates to the ideas we have for the Super Bowl event. I've got great feedback in the last 24 hours about what kind of stuff you'd like to do during my upcoming marathon. We're going to talk about the success of the first ever stream over on DSP Throwback, how well it went, and plans for the future. But the big topic of discussion today is regarding DSP Reacts and how it's been affected by these membership bomb exploits. We have to essentially redesign the way that channel works so that my weekly react show, DSP versus the Internet, will continue to function. So we've got a lot of things to discuss and brainstorm about today. I hope you're up to the task on today's episode of the Level 1 Podcast. Alrighty, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, I tried to adjust my setup a little bit today. You may notice that the stuff behind me is a little bit further to the right because I've noticed that recently it hasn't been balanced and I'm looking at it and I'm like, something's off. So I'm trying to actually fix it today. The problem is one of my tripod legs stopped working properly. And because of that, basically the camera's been off a little bit and hasn't been able to be like straight. But I'm trying to adjust it to make it better. So I apologize if it looks a little off today as I try to adjust and make things look a little better. I'm trying to be centered while also be having the stuff even on my sides. And it's tough. <laughs> it's not easy to do, especially because every day I accidentally kick the tripod and I think it's screwed up. All right. Hopefully this looks good to you. And uh, welcome to the show. Today is Monday, the 22nd of January, 2024. And we've got a lot to talk about today, okay? A lot going on, which is a good thing, by the way. It's great that we are early on in the year and there is so much going on. I mean, we are on the precipice of multiple new releases that are coming out this Friday with Lag of Dragon, Infinite Wealth, and Tekken 8, which I'm very, very excited for. But we still got all this other stuff going on. You know, we've got the launch of DSP Throwback, which has been successful, and now we had our first stream, which is going really well, and I want to talk about that because I'm ecstatic. Um, we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the upcoming Super Bowl event, which we've now begun plans for, and I think that's going to go really well because I've gotten feedback, and you guys definitely want to do something different this year from what we did last year, which I'm totally cool with, so I think that's going to be a great one. Um, but now, sadly, we also have a challenge, and the thing is, I know we're up to the challenge. You know what I mean? Like, we've been through so much over the years, I absolutely positively know that we can get through this one. Um, the problem is, there really is no solution to the problem that's going to be 100% great for everyone. Um, you know, I, I, the way I see it is, when you, when you have adversity in your life, you adapt and change for the better, but there's always going to be people who are not accepting of the change, right? DSP Reacts has run a certain way for a year. It's been successful running a certain way for a year. Now we have to tweak that formula because people have found this exploit on YouTube to just gift a ridiculous amount of memberships out for almost zero cost, which skews everything. You know, here on this channel, is it that big of a deal? No, not that big of a deal. When you're a member here, what do you get? Access to emotes, a chat crown badge, and you can avoid the slow mode in the chat, but that's really about it. But a channel like DSP Reacts has a show every week that hinges on those membership tiers and that structure working properly because people get privileges to submit videos for a show. And when all of a sudden overnight you go from 100 people to 400 people who have the opportunity to submit a video for the show, 300 of which never paid, that's pretty broken. And it's going to sadly, uh, you know, change the show for the worse. So what we need to do is brainstorm a solution. Now, I think I have the solution. The problem is I don't know, number one, how to fully implement it, which is what we're going to talk about today. And number two, I know some people are going to be upset with it, and there's nothing I can do about it. You know, I don't want to change DSP Reacts. I like how the channel works. That's why I've had it the same way for a year. 
But when these these actions happen, you're kind of forced into it. And that's the situation I find myself in today is that we're forced into making a change that I don't want to make, but I have to, okay? So we're going to talk about that, all right? Um, but anyway, let's get through everything because we have so many topics to talk about right now. Really, we do. Um, so let's begin. First of all, let's talk about yesterday's streams, okay? The podcast yesterday went well. I recapped my decision to cancel the documentary about me, but also talked about the reactions across the internet about it, how hilarious the reaction of all my trolls and haters is because now they have no content to make out of it, and they're crying, and they're they're writhing, and they're trying to white knight Mike Klum, who literally has said there's no reason to white knight, everything is fine, but they try to make controversy where it doesn't exist. It's absolutely hilarious, but my fans and viewers are kind of rejoicing that I decided not to do this. They were definitely afraid that all the good momentum that I had going into this new year would be stifled by drama, and now there's no drama. So people are very happy with that decision. Um, in addition to that, uh, we talked about the Super Bowl party. And the Super Bowl event is going to be called DSP Super Bowl Bash. It's going to be on Saturday, February 10th. It's going to be a marathon right here on DSP Gaming. It's going to feature food. It's going to feature discussion. It's going to feature booze. It's going to feature me dressed up as an NFL player over the course of the day. But... The one key factor that we didn't figure out, what exactly um, would be the content of the, the marathon. Last year when we did it, there was a big segment that was me reacting to Super Bowl ads of yesteryear, and there was a fantasy Royal Rumble match that we did in WWE 2K22. Well, number one, most people are saying they don't want to see ads again. They prefer to only see that around you know Black Friday-ish for Thanksgiving. And number two... Uh, no one cares about WWE at this point. I haven't played the game in over a year. I still have it on my PS4 or PS5. I really don't know why. In fact, I'm just going to delete it now. We haven't played WWE 2K22 in so effing long. And I have no plans on playing it again. So I'm just going to get it out of there. Um, so yeah. So really, it's a completely different style of marathon this year. All right? And with all the discussion going on about what it should be... Um, I have an update, because I'd like to give you the update now, since we're talking about this. There's two schools of thought. However, the schools of thought are completely aligned when it comes to one factor. Gameplay. This year, people want gameplay during the Super Bowl event. Okay? Now, the question is, what kind of gameplay? Right? Well, there's many options, things that we can do. One school of thought is that because it's the Super Bowl, I mean, this is a giant competitive sport, NFL, right? National Football League. Play competitive games, right? Go online and do an hour of Call of Duty multiplayer, just running around, and of course, I'll be buzzed from drinking that day. So just run around and, you know, get some kills, swap weapons around, do melee streaks, be silly, because I don't play Call of Duty that often, so it's good to have a stream like that to break stuff up every once in a while. So just do a one-off Call of Duty segment in the show. Play fighting games. At this point, Tekken 8 will be even out for about two weeks. So jump online with Tekken 8, maybe try a new character or mess around and just do some Tekken 8 gameplay online. Or go back to Street Fighter 6 for a random session. Play with Zangief and 360 people. Play with Dalsim and, and, you know, zone them. Just be silly. It doesn't have to be a serious session, but just play some Street Fighter. So that all sounds good to me. And that all makes sense. For a Super Bowl stream, competitive gameplay makes a lot of sense. All right? That's number one mentality. Number two mentality is, at this point, in two weeks when this marathon goes on, I'm going to be in the middle. Oh, that's true, too, because Fed Roger just says, remember, Foam Stars will also be out. He's right. That silly game, Foam Stars, is going to be free for anyone who's a PS Plus subscriber as of February 6th. So it'll only have been out for a few days. We could do, like, a silly segment of that as well, just for, again, for variety of multiplayer. That's possible, okay? So that's, that's another thing to consider there, all right? Option number two... And this was presented to me by a couple people last night in video comments. Would be, instead of focusing on multiplayer, do like I did a couple years ago for my birthday. Now, admittedly, I don't remember what it was, so they elaborated. They said, during your birthday marathon a couple years ago, you actually were in the middle of so many current games and playthroughs. You just said, hey, we're going to do fun stuff. We're going to have a birthday cake. We're going to have food. But we're going to just continue with all the playthroughs I'm doing. So do a segment that's continuing like a dragon. Do a segment that does some new advanced gameplay in Tekken 8. Maybe do some of the story or do some, you know, arcade mode or whatever. Um, maybe do a segment of Baldur's Gate 3 for an hour or something like that. Just have 
segments of the current playthroughs you're doing so that way it doesn't set you back with all your current game playthroughs for doing this marathon okay that's that's school of thought number two school of thought number three is play american football games but there really doesn't seem to be a solution to that because most people say play blitz but nfl blitz isn't really available anywhere on a current network and the only viable way that i can see to play it would be to try to set up an elaborate emulation set up on my mini pc um i have not dabbled in emulation yet on my mini pc at all you know i, I had intended to maybe check out fightcade by now but i haven't yet um i really don't know how that would work or how elaborate and how annoying it would be to set that up especially because for a marathon i'm only going to be playing it for like an hour right so it's kind of like man i mean it kind of makes sense but at the very same time why would i do that and we do all that work for an hour during a marathon it, it doesn't seem to be worth the effort to set all that up um now some people are like get madden madden you want me to buy madden you literally want me to buy madden and pay tons of money for madden to play it for an hour during this marathon a game that i don't even know how to play i'm not going to get through the tutorial i'm not going to understand you know and as people are like we'll play tech mobile all right i mean i'm cool with that we did it last year but we already did it you know so you know i'll be honest with those three ideas i'd be okay with any of them um but for me i feel like either the online multiplayer or continuing on with the single player playthroughs i'm doing seems to make more sense than oh just do a lot of work to set up a couple random football games that'll just be fuck around and no one really cares after that day right um honestly i think i would i would have a lot more fun playing games i know and drinking right like having some liquor that day and just jumping online and doing some random multiplayer or you know just doing a little bit of continuation of the games i'm playing that would be more of a relaxing marathon to me having hanging out with you guys with games that we love rather than me playing games that are frustrating to set up and only playing for one day and dropping you know that's my take all right but you don't have to agree with me i want feedback on this the the bottom line is we just can't do all of it right we can't we can't play football games and online other multiplayer games and single player games all in one day there's not gonna be enough time right just you know we're gonna do a podcast we're gonna do this cool intro segment we're gonna be playing some games i'm gonna be eating food my wife's gonna be making multiple kinds of food that day uh to partake in like super bowl style snacks and, and cuisine so it's gonna have a lot of stuff going on already that's gonna be time consuming but the question is what do we do outside of that you know what are the segments of the show right that's what we really got to figure out King B. Cruel says there's a football player class as a pre-order bonus in Infinite Wealth. Maybe you can play as that class for a stream. I am planning to pre-order Infinite Wealth and Tekken 8 by Wednesday. And I'm thinking very strongly about getting one of the higher tier versions of Infinite Wealth, either the mid or highest tier. The mid tier gets that football player. You're right. The mid tier gets that. So maybe, yeah do like an hour of gameplay in infinite wealth where i'm just running around as the football player doing football combos and stuff right maybe even purposefully save that class and don't use it until the super bowl event and only use that class during the event or something like that right that could be interesting um all right so anyway that's the update and that's what everyone's thinking so what we need to do is you need to refine that thought now now maybe even do a poll or just talk about it for another few days but what would you like to see during the super bowl event multiplayer single player or football related games that would honestly i'm not really leaning towards because it sounds like it's too much trouble just to mess around with it for one silly day um you know and again remember there's booze involved there i'll be drinking that day for sure different things so uh because of that we want to be sure that it's not going to be something too crazy then again the multiplayer games we're talking about aren't a big deal i could easily play call of duty online bu buzzed uh, street fighter online if i'm buzzed i probably won't play ranked but you know you can always mess around with the with the player matches and stuff like that tekken i don't even know if i'm going to care that much nor do i even know what the online modes are for tekken <laughs> i don't even know i haven't looked into it we won't know till it comes out so anyway um let's think about this let's talk about it and let's figure it out but now we have more ideas this is good we got the ideas moving in the right direction so that we can figure this out okay Give me one second because I want to actually open my window all the way. It's actually feeling a little warm in here today. Luckily because I'm wearing a sweater uh, rather than just like a, a button-down shirt. So let me get a little bit more air circulation. Okay. Turn this on higher. Turn this on two. Okay. All right. 
So that's what happened yesterday. And yesterday was a good day uh, overall on the podcast. Then we jumped into the first stream yesterday, which was DSP React. And the show went well. Good variety of clips submitted. But during that show, the trolls showed up and gave 300 fake gifted memberships to DSP React. And yes, I'm going to call them fake because they're not paid for. All right? They're essentially stolen. This is the equivalent of like going up to a vending machine where the vending machine says a candy bar costs a dollar and you found a way to put a penny into the machine and it still gives you the candy bar. You stole the candy bar. You didn't buy it legit. You found an exploit to get the candy bar out of the machine. It, you didn't validly buy it, okay? And that's what people are doing with these memberships. They're not validly buying them. They found an exploit and YouTube won't plug the hole per se. They won't plug the leak. They're too lazy to do it. So, um, the word is illegitimate. Oh, there you go. Illegitimate memberships. I guess that's what we, we should call it, right? Okay. So, because they gifted 300 illegitimate memberships to the channel, this sadly destroys the way that that show works. All right? For those who don't know, the way the show works is there's three levels of member on the DSP Reacts channel. Standard, Super, and Ultra. Standard membership was $3.99 USD. Super was $9.99 USD. And Ultra was $20 USD. That's the levels and how they work. The difference in levels is thus. Standard member, you get to submit a clip for the show. Two a week, actually. Two clips you get to submit a week. It goes into a randomized playlist. I just literally hit shuffle play, and we watch them in a randomized order every week. And I jump around that playlist as well. So you have a chance to get your clip watched, but it's not a guarantee. Okay? If you're a super member, you still have that ability to do the submission of a video, but you also get to ask me Q&A questions, and I answer them in kind of a lightning round style. I don't go into massive detail answering, but I try to do like a, a quick answer to each question. So it's like you get the video submission, and you get, you get a question answered every week. If you're the ultra member, now this is the highest tier, and because of that, you guaranteed get your video clip watched on the show. So if you were doing you know, $20 a month, four videos a month you get watched right that's a good value so that's how it's always worked this has worked for a year no one has issue with this it's like clockwork we have about 100 members on that channel of various different levels every week we do a show it's smooth it works fine it, we've got it down to a science now we're hitting the one year anniversary in February and everything's good and now people find this exploit and use it and it's going to ruin the show you can't have 400 people submitting clips 300 of which didn't pay for it it illegitimizes people who have paid and supported that channel for the year. Imagine you're a paid supporter of DSP Reacts for a year. And every week you have a chance to get your clip watched. So some weeks it gets watched, some weeks it doesn't. And now it's this coming week. Oh, do I get my clip watched? Oh, look, 400 people submitted clips. So now you have zero chance to get your clip watched. But you paid for it. And you actually paid way more than the people who got the gifted membership. So how is this fair? The answer is it's not. It actually makes it completely unfair it's a broken system and it's not right and it shouldn't be like that okay so we have to fix this system all right and the question is how do you fix it well we're going to talk about that in a bit let me get through the whole schedule and all of that um because this is going to be a segment we really need to dive deep into how to do this what we're, essentially what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to ch cancel current membership tiers which means i'm going to lose that support it actually cancels memberships people you know have to start over and I have to create new tiers. But what we have to figure out is how those tiers are going to work properly so that it's fair to everybody. All right? We have to make it so that if someone gifts one of these stupid illegitimate memberships, it goes to a tier that doesn't affect the show. And then we have a tier that's for the show that people get all the things that they've paid for and more. Because the thing is, I have to increase the cost to make new tiers. I'll explain all of this. All right? Because this is it's complicated. YouTube system is so convoluted and stupid in the way that it works that I now have to adjust pricing and everything to get this to work properly and give people what they've earned by supporting the channel, all right? Okay. Anyway, so DSP Reacts went well. Um, and then last night, we did the first ever stream on DSP Throwback. I'm very happy to announce it went well. Now, admittedly, I bit off a little more than I could chew because it takes a long time to set up a new stream on a new channel. Not only do I have to just create the stream, I have to set up Nightbot to go in there and moderate. 
and that was a chore. Then I have to set up all of the pop-ups and notifications for the channel properly, and that's a chore. And I didn't get that done in time. Like basically I got pop-ups ready for tips and I got pop-ups ready for super chats, but I only had like two animations I had time to get in there. I couldn't even, I was rushing, I couldn't even find the animations for memberships. So I was like, I couldn't even get a pop-up notification for memberships ready in time. So I didn't have that ready. <clears throat> so basically, this the show work worked well, but it wasn't a hundred percent capacity. You know, once I get everything fully set up over there, the streams will be a lot more streamlined and run a lot better. Okay. So anyway, that stream went really well. You know, we varied different viewership. You know, at one point we had like maybe two hundred fifty viewers. We had over four hundred at one point. Um, <clears throat> and what the show was was me reacting to the Red Dead Redemption 1 playthrough from 2010. Uh, I did four parts, each part roughly a half an hour. So we got through like two parts of the playthrough and started part three and ran out of time. And you might be saying, why only two parts? If you did if you did two hours of reacting, why did you only get through two parts? Because there's a lot to say. You know, I was adding a ton of context, a ton of information a lot of people didn't know um, about the playthroughs back then and how things went because things were very different back in the day when I did playthroughs. Um, you know, obviously commentating over my old commentary and, and making judgments on, you know, the things I said back then, a lot of which were kind of ridiculously immature and irreverent, but that was the point because I was trying to appeal to a teen audience. It was good. Like, in general, the feedback I received, people loved it. People were like, wow, we really enjoyed this. It's better than we thought it was going to actually be at first, and now we want to see more of it. In fact, people who were on the stream immediately were asking, when's the next stream? Okay, first off, just so you know, support on the channel was pretty good. We actually got a bunch of legitimate members, which I think it was like maybe between five and ten actual legit members on the channel, which is great, and a bunch of super chats and tips as well. So the stream was successful, all right? Essentially, that was the first chance I had to earn anything on that channel because I don't have advertisements on that channel yet. So I did earn some, and that's good because there's a lot of effort that's gone into DSP Throwback over the course of this month right now, and it finally is starting to see some payback, which is great, okay? Um, by the way, once again, I didn't update the schedule. I swear I did, though. All right, hold on a second here. The schedule's not updated. Yeah, you know what? Let me do this right now. I swear to God I updated this, but maybe I didn't hit say. Okay. Say, all right, if you guys want to try the schedule command again, I think we got it working. Sorry about that, because I swear I've been updating the schedule, but two days in a row now you guys are using the command and it's wrong. So hopefully now this is working. Excuse me. Oh my God. Whew. Let's see if it works now. Yes. Cool. Excellent. All right, excellent. Um. So... <clears throat> Excellent, right? Good. Now, what was I saying? Oh, um, so the DSP throwback, it went really well, got some initial support on that channel, and the good news is because there were a lot of viewers on that stream, and then what I did is I, I made that stream an archive, so if you're a member on that channel, you can watch that stream on demand right now as an on-demand video, plus I'm now splitting that up into four parts and one part will be uploaded today for the next four days. One went live last night. One will go live tonight at 10 p.m. One at Tuesday. One at Wednesday, 10 p.m. So now that channel not only has ongoing parts of the Final Fantasy 13 and the Red Dead playthroughs, but now you're going to have parts of my commentary on the Red Dead playthrough as well. So now DSP Throwback is going in a full swing. We finally got a bunch of full-fledged content on that channel going, right? Um, that channel absolutely is going to qualify for ads very soon. If it didn't qualify already, it's going to qualify within the next one or two days. All I'm waiting for is YouTube takes a few days to update total views on the channel when it comes to like total watch hours, I think it is. So definitely it's going to qualify now and I'll be able to enable ads on the videos. So now I'll make a little bit of residual income from those watching the videos on demand 
and whenever I stream, I'll also be making income on the streams. So that's great. It's going to make it that that channel will be more viable to put work into now. Okay. So it went really well. And I want to say thanks. Anyone who was there last night, you were a great interactive audience. And I loved having the conversation with the audience while I was doing the commentary about these older videos. Um, and everyone seemed very eager to do another stream. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to do a stream on DSP Throwback every week. And there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, there's not a lot of video content on the channel to begin with. It's one part a day. And I can't go more than one part a day. Reason being, they take a long time to edit those videos. So one part a day of a half an hour is the most that really the capacity can handle right now. Um, if I were to do a stream of that once or twice a week, we would run out of content. Like right now, we watch the first two parts of Red Dead. If I did another stream, we'd probably do the next two to three parts. And within another two to three streams, we'd have no Red Dead to go through. We'd be, we'd be caught up and there'd be nothing to watch, you see? So it makes more sense to do it more slowly um, and do it over time as opposed to rush right into it. Now also, let's be honest here, the more that I work on projects outside of DSP Gaming means less gameplay for DSP Gaming. And last year, the direct feedback you gave me when I started doing way more work on the throw on the uh, React channel was that I was doing too much reacting and it was taking away from the, the gaming. So I did cut back. Remember, we were doing big events once a month. We were doing marathons of reacting to documentaries and stuff like that. And we were doing special events like tier makers and stuff often. And you guys basically told me, no, that's, that's too much. We want more gameplay on DSP Gaming. So please keep doing that, okay? So, that's basically what, I, what I'm, I'm focused on. So, here's the thing. I'm okay with maybe every other week on a weekend, like on a Sunday night, doing throwback night, right? Sunday throwbacks or something like that, where we do retro react. That's what this series will now be called, retro react, where I react to stuff from the past and give you commentary and modern takes on it. It could be gameplay, like more Red Dead. It could be Final Fantasy. Hell, it could be a night where we just hang out and we talk about the past and we can talk about old YouTube channel layouts and things like that and all kinds of stuff. So Retro React is the name of the, this new project on DSP Throwback, okay? Um, so when will the next one be? I'll tell you right now, not next week because next week we got two new releases. I'm going to be focused heavily on those and everything else going on. So maybe in two weeks, maybe we want to reassess in like two weeks' time. So two weeks would be, what, like February 4th? Yeah, I think like February 4th would be the day. So maybe on February 4th, we do the next Retro React uh, stream on DSP Throwback. And we just do it, you know, every couple of weeks. So that way we have content on there that's more than just the pure playthroughs. But it doesn't take away so much from my other ongoing content, right? That's what I'm thinking anyway. Um... But I was very pleased. A lot of attendance, a lot of viewership, good support. Couldn't have been happier with how that first stream went, all right? So, oh, by the way, I strongly recommend you subscribe to DSP Throwback because people couldn't chat. They were there and they were like, oh, I can't chat. Yeah, it's a 24-hour sub mode, just like this channel, just like DSP React. I have to do that to stop trolling. So please be, you know, careful about that because some people were disappointed. They couldn't talk. Like, yeah... Subscribe to the channel now. That way you'll be ready for when the next stream happens. Okay? Okay. Oh, and by the way, yes, of course, the trolls showed up to that stream and gifted a bunch of memberships, but it didn't matter. Like, on that channel, the membership just supports the channel. That's it. You don't get any features. Like, you don't submit videos or anything. So it literally didn't affect the channel negatively at all, so I don't give a crap about that, you know? The thing that, that really affects me is the DSP React stuff, and that's what we got to figure out today. All right? All right, so that was yesterday. Let's talk about the, the coming week, okay? Uh, today... It's the conclusion of Resident Evil Zero Remastered, uh, I hope. I hope. I don't know exactly if it's going to finish because we're at this boss, and this boss seems ridiculous. Like, I don't even know how to hurt him. He's a leech boss, so I don't know if you need to hit him with flames first so he'll take damage like the regular leech enemies, or if you could just shoot him and it works. I have no clue. The problem is you have to have both characters in the room at the same time, and whatever character you're not controlling is a doofus and just gets grabbed and hit immediately... And this boss on the hard difficulty takes your whole energy bar in two hits. So I really don't know how to beat the boss. And I'll be honest, I didn't really have time to research. You know, I'm sure I could have looked at my old playthrough, but I, I didn't have time to do that. So I'm kind of just winging it. And it might take a while to get past this boss today. I don't know. 
from what I'm gonna understand, we're very close to the end. Like, if I beat this boss, maybe there's, like, another hour of gameplay, and that's the game. That's the end of it. So, we are there, and we should beat it today and wrap it up so we can move on to other playthroughs and new games on Friday, okay? So, that's exciting. I hope you'll join me today, and I hope if I get stuck, you guys will give me advice on how to do this because I definitely want to beat the game today, all right? Then tonight on the late stream, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, ladies and gentlemen, it's a bittersweet late night stream tonight because tonight is the finale of Street Fighter VI. The finale. After how many months, right, playing this game? It came out early June of last year. So I've been playing it consistently for like seven plus months at this point. Um, it's time to wrap it up. And do the final gameplay tonight so we can move on to Tekken 8 starting this Friday. Okay? So I hope you guys will join me for it tonight. It's going to be Blanca, the character who I've done the best with, played the most with. We're just going to go all in and see what kind of matches I can have tonight with Blanca. Hopefully I get some wins. I'm sure there'll be rage. Um, so it's going to be fun. It'll be the final send-off for Street Fighter VI. If you can make it, please be there to give it its send-off. And uh, it's been a great time. Don't get me wrong. With all the rage and all the, the stuff that's happened in, in the time I've played this game, I've absolutely loved it. You know, it's the best fighting game I've played in many, many years. It got me back into competitive fighting games in a big way after being completely turned off by Street Fighter V. To come back to fighting games with Street Fighter VI has been a delight. And I'm happy to play it one more time tonight. Okay? Very nice. Then, on Tuesday, <clears throat> it's the continuation of Baldur's Gate 3 on the first stream. We're going to continue on now and head into Act 2. Finally, we're heading into Act 2. And since we're doing Act 2, I'm strongly considering swapping out Will and putting Shadowheart into my party. Especially because apparently now we have a great build for her. Like, we have good armor. We've got this crazy good mace, right? And now we can level her up and, and class her well. Because apparently at the beginning of the game she sucks, but now she gets much better if you reclass her, which I think we should do. So I think that's going to be great and a fun stream on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday night stream, we're going to try Pal World again. Pal World is the shocking hit of the internet. Now, no exaggeration, over a million people are playing it concurrently on Steam. It's sold something like 3 million copies in climbing. Everyone is playing Pal World. I played it on Saturday. I thought it was fine. I wasn't blown away by it, but I also could understand the addictive nature and why people liked it so much. Hilariously enough, for a game that definitely feels like it's a, a wonky and unfinished game, it looks and runs better than Pokemon. Like, I'm embarrassed to say that. It looks and runs better than anything Game Freak has put out in the last five years. That's sad. It, like, wow, I'm playing Pokemon, and the Pokemon looks so good, and the graphics are so good. Yeah, because they fucking ran it on a good engine, on a modern console or PC, instead of on a terribly outdated engine, on a piece of shit outdated console in the Switch. So, of course it looks better, right? <clears throat> so pretty crazy and I'm excited to play it again and here the thing is it's a survival game and after having played it on Saturday we got to a point where I have a little village that's kind of self-sufficient the pals are building the pals are harvesting the pals are feeding and doing things and now I can kind of head out and explore more so now I feel like when I play it again on Tuesday night it'll actually be a little bit more exciting because it's not just stuck at your home base you can actually go out and venture more we actually got a new weapon I think I have the ability to craft better armor and stuff like that. So we're, things are opening up and getting more exciting now, okay? Um, and by the way, it absolutely is the style of game that's like a late night chill experience. It's going to be a lot of people talking with me, feedback on what to do and what, what pals to catch and things like that. This is not the kind of game that I would want to sit there and play by myself or sit there and, and play as a daytime stream all the time. This reminds me of the nights we used to do Minecraft. That's exactly what this game is reminding me of. <clears throat> We could maybe do this game like once a week as a late night chill stream and just play it for a couple hours, make some progress, interact, and it could be like the, how we used to do Minecraft once a week. I'm really feeling like the game has that level of potential, but I have to see people want to show up and, and, and engage and support with it. You know, we played it on Saturday. It was kind of an oddity. I don't know if people are going to like it long term or not. Just because it's virally popular on the internet does not mean it's for my audience. And I know that. I know that the people here, we are not the mainstream audience for a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? So... Let's see what happens, uh, and uh, and go from there, all right? Let's see how it goes Tuesday night. Then on Wednesday, all right, it's going to be more Baldur's Gate 3, my final major stream of Baldur's Gate 3 for a while, because now I'm going to focus on new releases, and Baldur's Gate 3 will likely be balanced in with everything else every once in a while. 
Um, and then uh, Wednesday night, Sea of Stars, which is excellent. We actually got a big chunk in the Sea of Stars the other day, and now we're in the open world of the game, where now you can sail around and do stuff, and we're actually about to head out into that adventure of the game. So I'm excited to play more Sea of Stars Wednesday night and see where the game goes. So <clears throat> there you go. I'm excited, and I hope that you guys will join me all week for all that content. I'm off from streaming on Thursday. On Friday, it's big new release day. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth premiering on the first stream, Tekken 8 on the late stream, and Tekken 8 will 100% jump right into multiplayer. No exaggeration, I'm not even going into training mode. I'm just going to go right into multiplayer and start playing this game and see how I do. It'll be exciting. I'm going to play with Paul and maybe King and just try to kick ass and see if I can beat people. And if I get my ass beat, it's fine. But I'm excited to get back into Tekken in, in, in any capacity. You know, so it should be a fun time, and I hope you'll be there Friday night for the premiere of Tekken 8, okay? So, great week coming up, and then what'll happen is a balance of those two games for most of the week. Maybe for variety, I'll throw in something like a night stream of Baldur's Gate 3, or something every once in a while for variety, but definitely, <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of content of Tekken 8 and Like a Dragon next week coming up, all right? Cool? All right, now... <clears throat> I think we should figure out this DSP React situation because it's it's actually bothering me. Like it's in the back of my head, man. Right by now, I normally would have posted up the threads by which channel members can nominate clips for next week, and I can't do that because the show's all screwed up now because of this membership exploit. Okay, so I want to I want to explain to you how to fix it, but we need to brainstorm how exactly it's going to work. All right, so allow me to explain right now how dsp versus the internet works and let me explain my, how my proposed fix will work but then we got to figure out exactly how to implement it okay <clears throat> does that sound good okay um this guy there's someone in the chat who literally is having a discussion with themselves. <laughs> it's pretty funny just, just all i have to do is read one sentence just change your goals from subs to just plain dollar amount. Problem solved. Change my goals. I look down at my screen. Do you see any goals? There's a tips goal. Do you see any other goal? Do you see any sub goal? What is this guy talking about? He's like talking to himself. <laughs> I swear. Every day is a new adventure. On the internet. For me. It's like, what is going on? This guy's been going on like for like 20 minutes talking to himself in my chat. And no one knows what he's talking about. And he's like, change your goals on your stream. And I looked down like, goal? What is he even talking about? Uh. Anyway. Let's exercise the demons. You got the holy water? <laughs> ah! All right. I cast you out. I cast you out. All right, here we go. Let us start now talking about DSP React. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, um, DSP Reacts is a show I do once a week. It's a React show over on my React channel where basically people submit clips and I watch them back. Ultra members who pay the most amount, it's like $20 a month, get their clips watched every week. So for 20 bucks... You get to submit four clips that all get watched on the show in over the course of a month. That's pretty good. For like five bucks a week, it's a guarantee of a, of a video every single week, right? That's pretty darn good. <laughs> and that's fine, and that's not going to change. The problem is because now we have people having these illegitimate ways of granting memberships to hundreds of people, the show is kind of ruined in the current format because the current format is for $3.99, you become a standard member. And you have the ability to submit a video, or two videos, I should say, a week, that goes into a thread. I take that thread, and I make a playlist of videos out of it, and I literally hit shuffle play. And that's how we watch videos on the show. And that determines the order and everything, and we watch randomized videos. You never know what you're going to see on that show. Um, it works. People like the show. I like the show. But the problem now is if hundreds and hundreds of people have these memberships and didn't pay for them, it ruins that format too many people submitting videos and it's not fair to those who paid legitimately so we can't do it that way anymore we have to fix it okay um now currently there is a super member 
level. It's $10 a month. The benefit is you get to submit clips for the show as if you're a standard member, but you also get to ask a question in a thread for Q&A. And what I do is out of all the, the show, like when I hit like part five, which is like hour three of the show, <clears throat> I take that first segment of part five and I answer the Q&A questions from super members. To be clear, I have two super members on DSP Reacts. That's it. Two. Out of the hundred people that are members, two are super members. So this isn't a giant concern, all right? But there's some people who are currently paying $10 to get video submissions and these Q&A questions. And every week we get at least the one or two people who take advantage of the Q&A questions, okay? <clears throat> now, here's the problem, all right? Because of these fake gifted memberships, we can't keep these tiers anymore. It doesn't work. We can't have 400 people submitting clips, people who've played various different amounts for it. That's not fair. Everyone should be on the same playing field when it comes to video submissions, all right? So what we need to do is we need to make it so that to submit a video, it's not a gifted membership. That's what we need to do. It's the only way to fix the problem. I wish I could fix the pricing. I wish I could fix the loophole that is created on YouTube. I can't do that. I also can't change the price of memberships. What's what the standard and super levels that are there, I can't change the pricing. YouTube does not allow you to change the price on the fly at all. You have to actually cancel the entire membership level, meaning anyone who's in that level, you'll lose all that income. YouTube removes it, all right? And then you have to make a whole new level, and then you have to have people come in and redo their, their memberships, right? So right off the bat, I can tell you this is a big undertaking because I have to have people <clears throat> pay attention to the fact that I have to cancel the tiers and then resubscribe to a new tier of membership. A lot of people probably won't even do that right off the bat. So immediately this is gonna result in lost income for me. Is that fair? No, I didn't do anything wrong. Someone found an exploit on YouTube and won't stop using it. I can't stop the exploit. So now I lose income. It's bullshit, all right? It is, it's complete bullshit and it shouldn't be allowed. But what can I do? I could sit here and I could whine and cry, and stamp my feet like a baby and say, wah, wah, wah. And I just did. But now I got it out of my system. And now it's like, what can I do? I gotta move on positively, right? So I will move on positively and say, we're just gonna try to fix this now, all right? <clears throat> now, admittedly what this means is since we're gonna create new tiers, the lower tier is gonna be for people who do this exploit and gift these memberships, and they will not be able to submit videos. All right, so essentially what I wanna do is make a tier that's just like base tier or standard tier, and all that tier is, is you get emotes and you get your chat crown badge, and that's it, you don't get anything else. It's just the basest level, entry level. And if they wanna gift that one till the cows come home, give me 50,000 subscriptions or whatever, or 50,000 memberships over there worth zero dollars, they could do that, I don't care. It won't affect anything, okay? What I need to do is I need to make a new tier of membership where people can submit videos, but, and here's the catch, this is what really, really sucks. The cost of the tier of membership has to be above $5. Why? Because that's how YouTube set it up. The way YouTube is set up, gifted memberships always gift the highest tier of membership up to $5. Yeah. So if I were to make a lower tier membership that's like a dollar or two dollars, and then I had a tier that was four dollars, which is currently what the standard is now, and someone gifted, it would gift the standard membership and it would screw the whole channel up again. And there'd be no point to me redoing this. And there's nothing I can do about that at all, okay? That's just how YouTube works. The gifted memberships gift the, the highest possible membership up to $5. So my membership has to be above $5 to fix it, all right? There's another problem. YouTube doesn't let you do custom pricing for memberships. Their memberships are priced as follows. $199, $299, $399, $499, $599, $699, $699, $799, $899, $899, $999, $1099, yada, 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 yada. That's how it works. You can't just type it in and say, I want it to be $5.01. It doesn't work. 
you have to go by their pre-established pricing model, all right? So basically, right now, to fix DSP React, the Ultra members stay exactly the same, okay? I have to cancel the standard and the super tiers so they won't even exist anymore. I have to create two new tiers. One would be considered standard, and I think the next one I'm going to call is submission tier. And I'm going to do it as cheap as I possibly can. So whatever that standard is, I don't even know what it'll be, a dollar, two dollars, whatever the lowest is I can make it, I'm going to make it the lowest amount. And then submission tier will be the lowest possible, which according to YouTube's criteria would be $5.99 to avoid that tier being gifted out. Okay? Now, there will no longer be a super tier. I'm just eliminating that tier entirely. All right? But what that means is that if you now are going to be a submission tier member on DSP Reacts, first of all, yes, you still get to submit two clips a week for the show. So that's not going to change in any way. But you will also be able to put a question in for the Q&A. All right? But here's the problem with that now, all right? Here's the real problem. This is going to upset me. <laughs> this is going to screw up the Q&A now. Because the way the Q&A has always worked, all right, is basically that if you post up your question, I answer it. Like, guaranteed. Because we didn't get that many. You know, I get like a couple a week. So I'd say, okay, it's time for Q&A, and we'd rattle through Q&A, and we'd answer like four or five questions within like 10 minutes, and we'd be right, right back to videos. But now, if everyone who is at this submission level tier is going to be submitting questions, I could potentially end up with a ton of questions. And how do I answer them all when I also need to do as much reacting to videos as possible, right? So there's a few things that I, I you know, thought about. I mean, number one would be, one entire part of the show is dedicated to Q&A. So instead of just doing 10 minutes, 30 minutes of the show is dedicated to Q&A. So I do like lightning round questions for 30 minutes to answer everybody's questions, right? But even then, that might not work, all right? I might not have enough time. The other thing would be do like I do with, clip, with the clips. It's random. So I'll make a thread for clips and I'll make a thread for questions. And basically... Most of the show is clips, but one segment of the show is questions, and I just random select questions. So you have a chance to get your question answered on the show. It's not a guarantee, but a chance. And in that way, it's kind of equal to what we're doing right now. All right? And basically, I, I don't think it's going to be great no matter what. You know what I mean? Like, no matter what, there's no good solution here. No matter what, I, it, it's an it's a unfair solution. Because people who've been paying $3.99 a month now have to increase to $5.99 to submit clips. I don't want to do that, but I have to. I literally have to do that to fix the problem. Do you understand? Um, and by the way, someone had a solution that doesn't work. Someone would say, make the submission tier lower than the standard tier. That way, if the submission tier, everyone can submit clips, but the standard tier is the one that's gifted. That's not how it works on YouTube. It's tiered, it's tiered access. So if there's a tier that's above the lowest, they get all of the, the perks under plus that. So a gifted membership would still be able to submit clips. And I can't stop that. Like, there's no way to actually stop that. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know. That sounds very technical. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. All right, let me, let me put it this way. An ultra member has access to everything under them plus the ultra member perk. You see what I'm saying? So if I made a... $4.99 standard member and that's the one that gets gifted and then I made a $2.99 submission tier the gifted tier would still be able to submit clips and I can't stop that it gets everything under it so I can't do it that way I know what you're saying you're thinking oh you know fix this or fix I can't fix it there's no way I can do it that way it's just it's screwed up I have to have it so that we have kind of this low end dummy tier that absorbs the gifted memberships but has no other access to any other perks. And then we have to have the, sub the tier to submit clips above that, above $5 so it can't get gifted. That's the only way to fix this, okay? <clears throat> HoboX says, why, why cancel any existing tiers and not just add 
the submission tier as the fourth and let people move over for the first month. Because if I don't cancel the tiers, that's not fair. If so, Let's say someone right now is subscribed at $3.99 and they're not even paying attention to any of this. And now all of a sudden, I take away their access to submit clips, but they're still paying $3.99. They'll be like, I paid for my subscription and I didn't get what I, had, what I, I was agreed to. They agreed to pay $3.99 a month to be able to submit clips. And if I take that away, I've basically kind of violated what I promised. You understand? It's like a violation of the agreement that we had. And it's not fair to them, especially those who have recurring memberships, who may pay that, right? And now not know they can't submit clips and they go to do it and they can't do it. That's not fair. Oh, by the way, if you want the same exact features you already had, you have to pay extra. That doesn't make sense, right? So here's the thing. If I cancel all the tiers and I make it like a small dummy tier at like a dollar or two dollars and that's the gifted one and it doesn't really have anything but emotes and then we have another tier that's the one where you can submit clips but you can also do the Q&A, I'm adding value. You see, instead of, you used to pay $3.99 just to submit clips. Well, now there's no longer a $3.99 tier but there's a $5.99 tier where you can submit clips and ask questions. So there's added value. Okay. Eternal Napalm, I have no idea what that means. <clears throat> Eternal Napalm says, Chat GPT says, have a time duration rule to mitigate spamming of subs. I don't even know what that means. What is a time duration rule? Right? I don't know. So anyway, the, the problem, by the way, Gternal says cancel Q&A. If I cancel Q&A, now I have no added value for people who are going from $3.99 to $5.99. I'd be saying, hey, you want to continue to submit clips? Pay me more money for the same thing. That's not right. The members of DSP Reacts have done nothing wrong at all. Why am I going to punish them and make them pay more money to get the same access that they have right now? That's ridiculously unfair, and I feel it's immoral. I'm not going to charge them more money for the same. That's bullshit. I'm not fucking Netflix, all right? I'm not just going to raise my price arbitrarily and put that cost onto the viewer because some fucking troll is trying to ruin it for everybody. I'm not, not, I'm not a giant megala corporation who does immoral shit. I'm a nice guy, okay? So I'm not going to do that. If I'm going to raise the price, then I'm going to have an added value, okay? But this is the question. If I do this, right, and I do the added value, right, how do we do the questions? Because, the, I mean, the, what I got to figure out is do we have a dedicated segment of the show where I literally just answer questions and everyone gets their question answered? Do I do a randomized like I do right now with the clips where we have, okay, here's the thread, post up your question, and then on each show I'll just pick random questions and we'll answer them for like 20 minutes. And you're lucky if you get, you get in or not because I did random select or whatever, right? This is what we got to figure out, okay? This is what we got to figure out. <clears throat> no, we're not going to start doing video length limits and stuff like that. That's too complicated. Imagine now, every clip submitted, I got to sort by length, and then I have to do this, and I'll be doing 10 hours of work for a React show that's three hours. You know, that's <laughs> that's too much work. It, it has to be a show that's easy to do or else there's no point in doing it, you know? Oh, yeah, see, Eternal Napalm, I, sadly, I can't do that. He says, what chat GPT AI is recommending, don't let people who get gifted memberships participate until their second month. Can't do that on YouTube. The moment you become a member, you have access and there's no way to time it so that you have to be a member for a certain length to get more access. That doesn't work on YouTube. Nope. I wish it did. That would be great. Actually, that would be a solution because anyone who's only one month doesn't get access would actually solve the gifted issue, but you can't do that on YouTube. Nope. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think, I think what the solution here is cancel the standard memberships, cancel the super memberships. They no longer will exist and I'm going to lose all that support immediately and there's nothing I can do about that. Create two new tiers. One will just be the entry tier, 
which is, I mean, that's what I'll call it, entry tier. And it'll be like one or two bucks, and all you get is access to the emotes and the chat crown badge. That's it, okay? Then there's the <clears throat> the new standard tier or the submissions tier. Maybe I'll call it submissions tier, right? And that'll be five ninety nine, and that tier will be, you know, immune to the gifted, so it can't be gifted. You get to submit two clips a week for the show into the randomized playlist, and you get to submit questions for the Q&A into another thread, and basically, it's random select clips and questions. So now, you get added value. You have a chance not only to get your clip watched, but also to get your question answered during the Q&A segment, so there's added value, and it makes sense to pay a little bit more for it. The problem is, I guarantee you, like with any change, I'm going to go from 100 members down to like 20. I guarantee it. I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. This is what's going to happen, and now I'm going to lose a lot of income this month. And I'm already down on income because ad revenue is terrible in January, so I'm already down. And then on top of that, I've lost a ton of uh, membership income on this channel because people who normally would have become members or re-upped their memberships didn't do that because they got gifted memberships this month that were free. So... I'm already down on a ton of income because of all this shit, you know? And it's bullshit and it's not fair. But what can I do? I can't, I guess I, I just gotta tough it out and I have to hope that this next month goes really well. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to hope that in the next, between now and the end of the month, so we got, what, like nine days left, that that goes well, that the new releases on Friday perform well, people show up, they support those streams. Um, I have to hope that you know, things in February go well with tips and the like, and, or else I'm going to be screwed. And it's not my fault. What did I do wrong? Uh, right now, it shows on YouTube, my views are actually higher this month than they were in December. My engagement is better this month than it was in December. And I've got other new channels that are successful. Throwback is doing good. But I'm doing poorly because of this bullshit, right? Uh, that's really fair. So, that's life. And again, I tell you guys this for a reason. I want you to know what's going on. I'm a transparent guy. I don't want people shocked that things are changing and stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to just change stuff without discussing it with you, right? I just want to let it be known. I Listen to me. I don't want to change DSP Reacts. I like it as it is. It's this nonsense with this exploit and the trolls that are making me do this. I don't like having to fucking change stuff because of it, but I have to. It's only fair or else there's no value to being a member over there if everyone just gets one for free and now no one has a fair chance to get their clip watched, right? So I just have to do it. I think what I'm going to do later tonight, I'm going to have to make a video to explain this and I'm going to upload it to DSP Reacts and make it the featured video and I have to cancel those membership tiers and I have to make new ones. And then I have to hope people will become members on the new tiers. And if they don't, I'm fucked. Because like I told you guys, that channel is viable because of the members. Literally, that's it. If I didn't have the member support I had, I would not be able to use that channel. I don't make a lot of ad revenue on it because those videos all get claimed. So I make almost no ad revenue on the channel. When I stream, I barely get any income on the streams either. It's really based on the membership revenue. If the membership revenue now is halved or less, I, there's no point in doing the channel anymore. And I don't want that to happen. I like that channel. I like that show. I want to continue doing it. I don't want my React channel to fail because some fuckface found an exploit on YouTube and ruined it. Okay? So, what can you do, right? What can you do? That's life, I guess. So, yeah. I'm glad we talked about it. I hope we agree this makes sense, right? Every, people in chat are saying, yes, it makes sense. It, it's fair. But again, you don't know what pe how people are going to react. That's the problem. Whenever there's a change like this, typically, people don't react well. They're pissed. You know, they'll be like, why? Why this change? Um, you know? I mean, all I can do is explain it and hope that people understand. I know people don't want to pay more, but what can I do? All I can do is say, hey, I'm sorry. It's not my fault, but that doesn't really change the fact that, yeah, you have to pay more for the same ability to submit clips for the show because someone broke YouTube, right? It's pretty messed up. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Anyway, so yeah, this is weighing heavily on me. I don't want this channel to fail, right? <laughs> exactly, there's no crystal ball on outcome. That's a, actually, I like that. There's no crystal ball on the outcome. 
I like how 104 Casper termed it. Right. There is no way for me to magically predict that this is going to work or not. This could work well, and the majority of people who are members will understand and come and become a new new tier level member and be able to submit clips and nothing, no problem. Or it could be the flip side of that where I do it and no one becomes a new member and now the whole channel fails, right? Hmm. And I will, I will outright apologize to anyone on that channel who has had a gifted membership and has been able to submit clips and now you won't be able to anymore. That's not my intention at all, but that's just the only solution. When, when someone can literally buy infinite memberships for negligible cost, right? If someone could take a $5 bill and slap it down on a table and buy like thousands of gifted memberships, you could see the problem, right? That, that, that would ruin any channel where the membership has access to something, you know? It's no longer exclusive priority access to anything. It just makes it common access, right? So there you go. When will I be changing it? Likely tonight or tomorrow. Reason being, I have to do it soon because people need time to post up their clips for next week's show. If people don't become the new members levels and then post up clips for next week's show, there's no show for Sunday, you see? And we're, we're about to hit episode 49. We're about to almost hit the 50 episode anniversary of the show, the one year anniversary. And now I have to make changes to make the show work because of these assholes. It sucks, right? So there you go. <laughs> How dumb. <sighs> anyway. So we're probably gonna do it. What else can well, alright, what else can we do? Um and go from there, right? So there you have it. Um Let's see what happens. I, I'm probably going to do it either later tonight or tomorrow. Um, and I hope it makes sense. Like I said, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out a special video tonight on DSP Reacts to explain the fact that this has to change and why and to apologize because this is fucked up that I have to do it. Um, right? But what are you going to do? It's life. And, uh, and go from there. Right? Okay. All right, guys. So... It just sucks. I don't like ending it like that. I really don't. I don't like ending it like that at all. But I have to, right? All right. Well, let's move on. Let's, as disappointing as it is to move on like that, we have to move on, right? Let's get to shout-outs for the show today, okay? Uh, first of all, Danny the DK, five months as a member here on the channel, says, I fully understand. It sucks this happened to you. Well, thank you for understanding and acknowledging that. It's life, right? I mean, the good news is, thank God, it's not all the eggs in one basket. It's not, right? That's good. But at the same time, I don't want to see the whole idea of a react show I did for a year fail now because someone broke the system, you know? It doesn't really affect DSP Gaming that much. It doesn't affect DSP Throwback. But any channel where these member tiers affect content, this is it's potentially awful, right? And nothing much can be done about that. So, <clears throat> okay. Anyway... <clears throat> Excuse me. That's the deal, folks. Um, all right, so continuing on, let's now get to shout-outs for tips. We actually start out today with an overnight tip that came in from Richard. And ladies and gentlemen, just listen to this. A $50 tip. Awesome. Thank you so much, Richard, for a really generous tip right off the bat today. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, see, this is the... I didn't have time to set up the animations properly on the channel yesterday for throwback, so I didn't have this anime. I didn't have, like, half the animations ready. I gotta get those animations set up over there. Anyway, so Richard with a $50 tip to start today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... He puts the rich in Richard. <laughs> That's great. Who puts the rich in Richard? <clears throat> Very good. So, Richard says the following. So, you don't have to make this, but there's something my family loves to make for the Super Bowl. We call it the sausage roll. So, you take a pound of sausage and you brown it in a pan. 
Then you drain gre the grease out of it. Take a container of Philadelphia cream cheese. Melt it down. Put the cheese and sausage filling into a Pillsbury Doughboy croissant roll. Roll all that up and bake it for 10 to 15 minutes at 350 degrees. It's delicious, so try it. Well, I know some people are probably going to say that sounds disgusting, but if you think about it, if it was like tasty sausage that have good seasoning, and you know what that's kind of like? So you're wrapping sausage in a croissant roll, but you're just adding cream cheese to it, right? So it's kind of like almost like a breakfast thing, but also with cream cheese, right? I wonder how that would be. I don't know. See, Philadelphia cream cheese, I'm not a huge fan of. I'm just going to be honest. I don't think it's that good. I, I prefer other brands. But, um, I mean, that could be good. I don't know. Anyway, thank you for the recommendation. So they, he calls it a sausage roll or something like that. And they do that every year, apparently. Interesting. I don't know about the cream cheese working. Baking cream cheese? How would that work? Um, how would that work? Cream cheese. Would it, doesn't cream cheese melt in the oven? Now I'm confused. I don't know. Anyway. Um, cool. So, thank you for that. I received, uh, a, th this is weird, $3.47 tip. I don't know the significance of that amount. Maybe that's a currency conversion or something, right? But I got a $3.47 tip. Someone says the following. I have a suggestion in regards of Tekken 8 premiere on Friday. Instead of playing ranked, do community night with your viewers. This, can, this way we can mess around together. Nah, here's the thing. Community nights are fine once you've established a groundwork of what you know what you're doing in a game. Excuse me. And you've already put out enough content to satiate those who want to see that game covered in a, in a I don't know how to say it, like a competitive capacity. Community nights went fine in Street Fighter VI, but they never did great. It was just a nice way to give back to the fans. The first night you play a new game should not be fan night. Where You know what I mean? Like, you do fan night after you've played the game for a few weeks, you know a few different characters, and you can kind of alternate between them and mess around. Like, I'm not going to know much at all, and I'm just going to flub it around. I don't think that fan night, first night, is the right night for it. I'm not saying I won't do a fan night in Tekken. In fact, I probably will, if the lobby system works well. Again, no one's played this game yet. I don't know how the lobby system's going to work in Tekken 8. If it works well like Street Fighter did, then we can easily do a fan night. You know, password protect it, put the password out on the stream, have people join and play. But we don't know yet, right? That's the other concern, too. What if you promise a fan night on launch night, you're going to do it, and the things don't even work? Well, I kind of blew it, right? So, no. I, I appreciate your, your suggestion, but we're not going to be doing that on launch night, okay? But we will consider it, uh, you know, moving forward, doing fan nights at Tekken 8 is definitely a strong consideration. Okay. I received a $4 tip from Baldzum. The least I can do is cover my illegitimate membership on DSP Reacts. Well, thank you, Baldzum. I appreciate the tip. Um, thank you for that. And uh, again, keep your eyes peeled. If you are interested in being a member over there and moving forward and being able to nominate clips, that's going to be reset within the next couple of days here. Okay? Uh, I received a $2 tip. There's a lot of great games coming out. It should be a great fun time. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a hell of a way to start 2024. Yeah, and the funny part is, literally every game you mentioned is an RPG, right? And you didn't mention Like a Dragon, right? <laughs> There's so many RPGs coming out in a short period of time. This is like RPG heaven this year. But as we've been saying... I just don't feel like there's enough time to play them all, and there's too many coming out in a short period of time, and I don't know what they were thinking there. They, if they'd spaced these RPGs out over the course of the year, I feel like it would have worked a lot better. I have no idea why they, like, congested it like that into there. You know what I mean? Oh, really? Casanova says sausage rolls are actually a thing in Britain, and there's something called Greg's Bakery Sausage Rolls, and they're the best in all the country. So that's a, it's a British food thing is what you're saying. Hmm. Interesting. So I received a $20 tip for One Minute Man. He says, you know, I hope that you're going to have enough ammo to beat the Queen Leech because this could be the toughest fight in the game. Uh, that's what we're doing right now, right? That's the boss we're at? I think so. And I don't know how to beat him because, uh, again, my, my major problem here is that 
sadly, uh, I, I'm getting to this fight and I have to control both characters and you can't really. One character just kind of stands around like an idiot and gets hit. And I don't really have the ability to save those. I don't, I don't know. This could be a major pain in the ass. You know, I'm going to have to look into getting advice from you guys on how to fight this boss. I don't know what to do. Then again, is it the Queen Leech we're fighting? Because isn't it the guy? I don't I don't know what the name of the boss is. So. Okay. Um. All right. Well, I've done all the shout-outs so far. We have a few extra minutes here. If anyone has a question, they'd like to tag me in the chat and ask. We'll do a little bit of Q&A. And then uh, take a brief break for, you know, restroom. And then uh, get set up and try to finish Resident Evil Zero. All right. Am I going to play the Indiana Jones game? Maybe. It looks pretty good to me. It looks pretty solid. I like the idea that it's first person and it has a what appears to be an accurate representation of the character from the like 1980s version. You know, I like that. So I am interested in the game. Casanova says, I never had gamer glasses. Do they make everything a yellow tint? Slightly. So for example, if I take these glasses off, I see a lot more blue. That's really the difference, is that when they're on, you basically don't see as much blue. I could still see blue, but some things don't look blue. For example, right now I'm looking at my desktop, or excuse me, I'm looking at my laptop, and the browsers, the edges of the browser usually are gray, correct? So when I take this off, it looks more blue-gray. When I put these on, they still look gray, but they look a more yellowish tint gray. Because that's the actual point um, of the glasses is that they're supposed to block out blue light because blue light supposedly is what irritates your eyes. Um, so that's the deal. That's, that's what they really do. So is there a slight yellow tint? Yes, there is. Slight. But it's not actively noticeable. And once you wear these glasses for a while, you don't even notice it. So... Am I going to play the Princess Peach game coming in March? I don't know. I am interested in it, but it seems like every time I play a Nintendo platformer, nobody cares, including Mario Wonder, which was one of my favorite games of the year, so we'll have to think about it. Tyrone, there's literally no way to offer discounts on memberships. As I just stated, YouTube does not allow you to change the pricing of memberships at all. The only way you can do it is cancel an entire member tier and start over and create a new one which requires everyone to manually go and resubscribe to the new membership tier. So I can't, I would never be able to change pricing and do discounts or anything like that. It's not available. No, I never played early 2000 Tony Hawk games. The only ones that I ever played was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 in the recent collection that came out for modern consoles. And I loved the collection and loved the games, but I never played them back in the, that time period. Uh, I actually, during that time period, was um, just playing competitive Street Fighter. And that was it. So, <clears throat> um, I received a two dollar tip from Anso Kamaru. I got roasted online the other day. I made a post that even though Pal World is really fun, it'll get old fast unless it has a campaign or missions of some sort in addition to open world aspects. What would you say the sweet spot is for linearity versus complete open world? I don't mind super linear games like Final Fantasy 13. I generally hate open world. I feel like games like Yakuza series blend it perfectly. What's your take? I was thinking about this this morning. I was like, the way that Power World can succeed is, number one, to keep the game updated and patched per fan requests. So if fans find, some, uh, find things a little bit too tedious or broken, fix it as soon as possible. And number two, to add a stream of content. So it's great that right now it has the content it has. But with millions of people playing it, within a couple of weeks, basically that content will be done, right? That content, will be, everyone will have explored it all. So what they need to do is every few weeks, add a little bit of new content. Add a little bit of new content, you know? If they keep doing that, that stream of content, the truly open world game formula will work. But sadly, what happens with a lot of these games is they drop their game and that's the game. And now you might have to wait six months for a major content update in which case everyone's seen all the game within a month and they're bored and they move on, right? So they need to find a way to get people hooked and want to keep playing this game and not just do the same thing over and over. 
Now, maybe there is a lot. I don't know. I've only played three hours of it, so I've barely scratched the surface of probably what's really available in this early access version. Um, is there end game content? Right? If you play this for 40, 50 hours and you've grinded out giant weapons and you're mounting these pals and riding them across the map and fighting bosses, is there dungeons and content and stuff to do? Or does the game just get boring and you run out of stuff to do? I don't know. You know, I don't I haven't gotten that far. For me playing it casually, I'll probably won't even get that far. You know what I mean? But that's the key is to stay on it and keep updating it in a stream. A constant stream. Even if it's little trickles of content, but it's a constant, like once a week they do a patch and it adds new stuff. That would be ideal for a game like this, I feel. But the problem is if they wait too long... You know, take a look at a game like Halo Infinite. That game was at the absolute top of its class. It was the best play, oh, the best rated RP, or excuse me, oh, RPG. It was the best rated FPS of the year. Tons of people were playing it because it was Game Pass. And they just never updated it. They literally were not updating the game. They were claiming they didn't have the manpower and the means to do it. So within two months, the game got stagnant and died. And now no one plays it. It's as if the game never existed. The best FPS of the year that year, it overshadowed Call of Duty that year. And no one plays the game anymore because they didn't update it. You know? Success can be fleeting. You have to keep that level going, right? You have to keep with that flow. You know, when Fortnite all of a sudden saw a viral explosion of players, literally Epic Games put all of the assets of their company into developing for Fortnite, and now you see what's happened, right? Right? Yes, Anso Kamara, we can see your message. Apparently for the first time in ages, we can see your message. There you are. I don't know what you changed that we can see you now, but we can see you now. <laughs> that took several months of figuring out, didn't it? What's up, Matt? How you doing? Jade says, uh, Howdy, I'm watching Red Dead Redemption 1 on DSP Throwback. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying it. I like the playthrough a lot, so... <clears throat> Euphoric Joker says, I feel like the next time you play Arkham Knight, you'll appreciate it more. Perhaps you're right. You might you might be right. You know, th those years of 2015, 2016 were very chaotic for me. Like, I played this game in 2016, and I don't remember much about it. Like, I know that the that one to two years of my life wasn't great, you know, both personally and professionally. I was getting burnt out on content at that point. I was getting harassed constantly online by people doxing and, and fucking... I got swatted. And my personal life here was falling apart behind the scenes. Um, you know, it was a mess. Those couple of years were a pretty big mess. So perhaps if I played Arkham Knight again now, I would like it more. Especially with an interactive audience, perhaps. Probably. Remember, I wasn't even an interactive streamer back then. <clears throat> Derek, you're welcome. Derek says, I really had a blast all this time. Being able to post up videos for DSP versus the internet, he always appreciated the gifted memberships that people gave him, and thank you to those people. Yeah. Thank you to anyone who was gifting memberships on that channel. It's a shame now that everything has to change for the worse because of the actions of pieces of shit. Human fecal matter. But that's life, is that people are shit. There's tons of people on this planet that are just like that. And what can you do? Do you dwell on it? No. You just move on. We're going to fix the problem, and we're just going to move on. Uh... And, and just act like it didn't happen because that's all you gotta do you don't give these people attention fuck them fuck the dregs of this planet right <clears throat> okay yeah Anso Kamaru I literally have no clue why today you can talk but you couldn't previously I have no idea because you haven't been showing us banned in ages I'm almost positive you had mentioned to me that you were banned, so I went and unbanned you like six months ago. <laughs> but then you still weren't talking, so I don't know. <clears throat> you know? Okay. All right, anything else, guys? Any other topics to address before we uh, we take a break to uh, having used the restroom and then to jump back into Resident Evil here?
Arkham Knight aged like fine wine and looks better than a lot of new releases from today. Oh, yeah? You think so? <laughs> 672 says, I've had an issue. For some reason, I wasn't able to talk and chat on my laptops, but I could on my phone. It would last like 24 hours. That's what Derek was saying, too. That he was able to talk on one thing and not the other. What the hell causes that? <sighs> Who knows, right? Like, what is up with YouTube with this shit, man? I don't know. It's so bizarre. Beyond Mystery says, What did you want to be when you grew up when you were a kid? An asshole. And I made it. I made it to my goals. Not a lot of people can say that. But now I'm a big flagellating sphincter, so it's excellent. Um... Oh, wow. I just received a $20 tip from Mark in the UK. Thanks for playing Resident Evil Zero so I don't have to. <laughs> wow. Well, Mark, it's certainly been an interesting ride returning to this game. Hopefully the ride ends today because, like I said, I got to move on to the new releases. I can't be playing this shit endlessly. And uh, it sure would be great to end it today. This is cool because you guys can now vote on a poll for what hat you'd like to see me wear for today's Resident Evil stream. And I'll set up that poll now before we end the show, and then you can vote, uh, you know, while I'm, I'm uh, on my brief break here. <clears throat> okay. Let's do a poll. Which hat is leeching best? <laughs> leeching best. Uh, let's see. The beret to, be, to look like a stars agent. Uh, the fake... Hair hat, because that has a camo, so that kind of looks like a Stars agent. Um, how about the Los Santos cap that I haven't worn in ages? Or, is there anything else that really applies? I just wore the cowboy hat last night for the Red Dead stream. Is there anything else that would apply to Resident Evil? Uh, nah, not really. Uh, the red fedora to go with my red sweater today. There you go. Why not? That's right, we're going leeching today. <laughs> I received another tip. Wow, you guys are being nice to me this morning. Thank you. A $4.20 tip just came in from an anonymous tipper. tipper. I'm sorry about this membership fraud. This is the first time I've seen or heard about the exploit. Do you think bigger streamers have the problem? Everyone has it on YouTube. Anyone who's a streamer on YouTube, this 100% affects everyone. It's, a, it's an actual currency problem. Other websites, all right, don't allow this. But this website does for some odd reason, okay? So, I don't get it. I don't know why this website allows this abuse, but it does. Um, and it screws everything up. So, yeah, it's part of, it's really messed up. And uh, I would hope that it would get fixed, but from what I'm to understand, this is the thing that's been going around YouTube for years. Like, people have been saying, this has always been an exploit. It's always been a problem. It, it just, you know, it makes its rounds. It goes to various different, different streamers on this site. And then eventually, like you know, goes away. You know, from what I'm to understand, it's not a problem on on other streaming platforms. On other streaming platforms, they force you to pay in the right currency. So, <clears throat> there you go. All right, guys, thank you for a great podcast. Thank you for your, your input, okay? Oh, Jade is saying next Saturday will be the Royal Rumble and also he'll be playing Tekken all day, so he probably won't be around. I think that's what I'm doing. I think I'm playing Tekken, too. I'm playing Tekken during the day stream on Saturday. Yeah, and then the night stream will be like a dragon, so. All right, sounds good. I hope you have fun, man. All right, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for a great show. Thanks for your input, as always. Thanks for your early support of DSP Throwback in its first stream, which did really well. I'm hoping to get ads on there sooner than later. Um, likely, this whole setup with DSP Reacts will be within the next two days. I have to do it by the end of Wednesday anyway, before I'm out of here for my day off. So either, you know, whether it's tonight, tomorrow, I'll have to do this new thing, and hopefully people will convert over. I'll make a, What I'll do probably is I'll make a video about it tonight so everyone's aware. And then I'll probably do the change Tuesday, so everyone will at least have a chance to watch the video first. Um, 
so thanks for your input and feedback uh and thanks for watching the show i hope that you guys are enjoying did i add the super bowl thing in here i didn't add the super bowl art in here darn i want to add the super bowl art into this podcast ending but i haven't yet all right so guys thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed thanks for your support and momentarily we jump into resident evil zero tomorrow hopefully we got some more interesting topics as well to talk about thank you and see you then peace out